The Steadfast Tin Soldier. Soon it began to drizzle, and the drops came faster, and there was a regular downpour. When it was over, two little street boys came along. Just look! cried one. Here is a tin soldier. He shall sail up and down in a boat. So they made a little boat out of newspaper, put the tin soldier in it, and made him sail up and down the gutter. Both the boys ran along beside him, clapping their hands. What great waves there were in the gutter, and what a swift current! The paper boat tossed up and down, and in the middle of the stream it went so quick that the tin soldier trembled. But he remained steadfast, showed no emotion. Looked straight in front of him, shouldering his gun. All at once, the boat passed under a long tunnel that was as dark as his box had been. Where can I be coming now? He wondered. Oh dear, this is the imp's fault. If only the little lady was sitting beside me in the boat, it might be twice as dark for all I should care. Suddenly. There came along a great water rat that lived in the tunnel. Have you a passport? Asked the rat. Out with your passport! But the tin soldier was silent and grasped his gun more firmly. The boat sped on, and the rat behind it. Ugh! How he showed his teeth as he cried to the chips of wood and straw. Hold him! Hold him! He is not. Pay the toll. He has not shown his passport. But the current became swifter and stronger. The tin soldier could already see daylight where the tunnel ended, but in his ears there sounded a roaring enough to frighten any brave man. Only think, at the end of the tunnel, the gutter discharged itself into a great canal that would be just as dangerous for him as it would be for us to go down a waterfall. Now he was so near to it that he could not hold on any longer. On went the boat, the poor tin soldier keeping himself as stiff as he could. No one should say of him afterwards that he had flinched. The boat whirled three, four times round and became filled to the brim with water. It began to sink. The tin soldier was standing up to his neck in water, and deeper and deeper sank the boat, and softer and softer grew the paper. Now the water was over his head. He was thinking of the pretty little dancer whose face he should never see again. And there sounded in his ears over and over again, forward, forward, soldier bold, deaths before thee, grim and cold. The paper came in two, and the soldier fell. But at that moment, he was swallowed by a great fish. Oh, how dark it was inside, even darker than in the tunnel. And it was really very close quarters, but there the steadfast little tin soldier lay full length, shouldering his gun. Up and down swam the fish. Then he made the most dreadful contortions, and became suddenly quite still. Then it was as if a flash of lightning had passed through him. The daylight streamed in. And a voice exclaimed, "Why, here is the little tin soldier!" The fish had been caught, taken to a market, sold, and brought into the kitchen, where the cook had cut it open with a great knife. She took up the soldier between her finger and thumb and carried him into the room, where everyone wanted to see the hero who had been found inside the fish. But the tin soldier was not at all proud. They put him on the table, and oh, what strange things do happen in this world! The tin soldier was in the same room in which he had been before. He saw the same children and the same toys on the table, 
and there was the same grand castle with the pretty little dancer. She was still standing on one leg with the other high in the air. She too was steadfast. That touched the tin soldier. He was nearly going to shed tin tears, but that would not have been fitting for a soldier. He looked at her, but she said nothing. All at once, one of the little boys took up the tin soldier and threw him into the stove, giving no reasons. But doubtless the imp in the spice box was at the bottom of this too. There the tin soldier lay and felt a heat that was truly terrible. But whether he was suffering from actual fire or from the ardour of his passion, he did not know. All his colour had disappeared. Whether this had happened on his travels or whether it was the result of trouble, who can say? He looked at the little lady. She looked at him and he felt that he was melting. But he remained steadfast with his gun at his shoulder. Suddenly a door opened. The draught caught up the little dancer and off she flew like a fairy to the tin soldier in the stove, burst into flames and that was the end of her. Then the tin soldier melted down into a little lump and when next morning the maid was taking out the ashes, she found him in the shape of a heart. There was nothing left of the little dancer but her guilt rose, burnt as black as a cinder.' 